this is my usual agenda for a change we are going to look at the case study of how to build a stock exchange server obviously this is an imaginary architecture which i have put and we are going to learn what is event sourcing and why do we need cqrs in this particular architecture and when can we use event sourcing with cqrs in our design and finally we will look at the challenges in building event sourcing and cqrs pattern based systems let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers as i mentioned we are going to look at the case study of building a stock exchange server again i am mentioning this imaginary because if you're working in any of the stock exchanges you might think this is not the right architecture so i'm just keeping an use case on how it would look like if they are using the event sourcing with cqrs pattern obviously when we say stock market there will be a lot of trading brokerages which will try to execute trades using some connectivity api into the stock exchange system whichever part of the world you are from think of this as your local stock exchange and imagine there are different brokerage firms and different softwares which are connecting to a connectivity api using which you can execute orders these orders are placed saying for example you are placing a buy or a sell for a particular stock and in the background this order gets processed these processing engines could be more powerful so there could be multiple instances of these orders and these could be processed and sent to something called as matching service so the orders from different brokerages are sent to the matching service so that it can match the buy and the sell and it can make an execution which will be completed now once the matching service identifies that there are some trades which have got matched and now i can just say these are executed it will be persisting the data into its own database we are calling it the trade events database so trade events database holds the buy and also the sell whichever got matched and also it sends the copy via the response processor back to the connectivity api which connects back to the trading brokerages so if somebody had placed an order and once these orders were executed they would have got successful execution message only when they were matched with a corresponding buy or a sell so as a part of it our matching service persisted the copy both the buy and the sell into a trade events database so this is like our data store where we have stored a copy of our event so it could be buy it could be sell both of them will be there so there will be a buy and a sell both of them will be placed in this trade events database in order to use this trading information for some other purpose the matching service is also going to publish the message into a messaging queue or an event bus imagine it like any internal messaging queue for example kafka so the exchange will publish the matched trades along with persisting and also sending it back as a response it also publishes to a messaging queue so that it can be processed by some post trade processing services so this post trade processing service will consume these messages and it will also process them so what it is trying to do is it's trying to split the messages based on the type of business or domain for example here the first message is pushed into a fees calculator which will calculate the fees based on the trades which are executed it also is persisted into a fees database so that way the transactions which were executed generated some fees and those fees are persisted into a fees database the post trade processing also publishes message into another kafka topic which could be a risk calculator which is going to calculate some risk specific to the trade which we executed and it is going to persist that into a risk database similar way it's going to again publish another message which is the trades message we are going to call this as end of day trades so what we are doing here is we are going to get all the current day trades and then these are getting published into a separate kafka topic so that it can be persisted into a separate database which holds only current day trades this will have all the trades which are executed for a particular day and it will be refreshed every single day in addition to all these the post trade processing is also going to send messages to the clearing and settlement platform it could be within the exchange or it could be external to the exchange as well so right now we are going to concentrate only on the execution part of the stock market so this is how an imaginary architecture would look like in addition to persisting all these domains like fees database risk database current day trades we are going to expose some data to the brokerages so that they can benefit from these data so we are going to expose a fees api which the trading brokerages can use 
to identify how much fees they have to pay because of the trades which they executed earlier. The risk database is internal so we might be exposing a risk API which will be consumed by our internal application. So if we are working in the stock exchange we might be having some risks calculators to identify if there is any problem within our system. So those are the risks internal API which is going to consume the data from the risk database. And finally we have the trades API which is exposing current day trades using which the brokerages can take a look at what all trades they executed that particular day. So this is how an architecture of a stock exchange server looks like. Of course there could be a lot of things which are happening in the background but I have just taken some key important things which we can leverage to learn event sourcing and CQRS. Now if you look at this particular architecture the trade events database is going to be called as an event sourcing system because the trades events database will have all the information about what all things happened within this system. So any buy any sell will end up getting persisted into the trade events database and that's why we are calling that as an event sourcing system. I'll explain what is an event sourcing system in a bit but understand that all the events which happened within the stock market will be persisted into the trade events database so that if you want to replay these messages you can definitely replay them to do post trade processing again from those data. So that is where event sourcing is very powerful because you can retain the state of your fees database, risk database, current day trades from your trade events database if you reflow them and then process them again. So that is why we are calling trade events database as an event sourcing system. The other part is the CQRS. Now if you look at the trades API which we expose that is where we have the querying pattern. I have also mentioned that this is the get message whatever we have to query the trades API and that's why we are calling it as a query service because we are going to retrieve all the trades using the trades API so that you can have a separate read using which we are querying the trades. So we executed order using the writes from the connectivity API and we are using um, trades API to query the data which is in a different database because we want to see only the current date trades. Of course if you want to expose some historical trades you can definitely do that with another query service but I want to show the query pattern using CQRS where you can segregate the query service and also the command service. So command service is where you tell the system what needs to be done. This is usually an update or an create operation. So in this use case the execution of an order is a command service where we are creating an order. Obviously we can also do an amend. For example you place an order to be executed and then you immediately go and change it. You can update that particular order. So command service is where you can do a create or update. Query service is where you can query the system. So using the command service is where you will write the data into the database which is the tra which is the trade events database and it also flows in directly to the current day trade. So when you create any new trade it always flows into the current day trades and using the trades API you are going to query the system. So this is how an end to end architecture looks like for a system if you are building using event sourcing and CQRS. I will explain individually these terms in the coming slides but, but this is the complete architecture how it could be. If you think this is complex that is what event sourcing and CQRS mean. Now let's understand what is event sourcing. So based on the example we understood that we got sequence of events and you can understand a state of a application using these events. So all the sequential messages which are present inside the events database is going to create a state of an application. For example we could have created the state of the current date rates from the database directory or we could calculate the fees again from the sequence of messages. That is where the reconstructing of the system using these events helps us. So we can rebuild our system using these events if there were any problems and you want to replicate the whole system and restore the application's state. So in the earlier example we saw the matching service persisting the data into the trade events database which had all the events which were flowing into the system and using these events you can rebuild the entire post trade processing systems from these events. This is why this particular system is called an event sourcing system. Now what is CQRS and why do we even need it? So we already had unfolded one particular pattern called event sourcing. Why do we even need CQRS? So CQRS stands for command query responsibility segregation. If you are using an event sourcing system, it could be difficult for you to query the system because if you want to create the state of the application, you will have to go through different events to come up with a single application state. So there could be a performance hit if you are stitching everything during runtime. 
that is why CQRS was introduced. So CQRS is a pattern using which you can segregate the query of read and write as individual components. So you will have a different read operation and you will have a different write operation. This will help reducing the load of the read versus the write. It also helps in independent scalability. That way your system could independently scale irrespective of the number of reads and the writes which our system is getting. If I overlay the example with the architecture which we saw earlier, the trades API used to do the query. Using the trades API, people were able to do a get query from the current day trades. So they were independently scaling the read capabilities. And using the execution space where we had order processor which was persisting the data into an event database, we were independently able to scale the command part versus the query part which we saw earlier. So CQRS is a pattern using which you can have a separate query and a command service so that you can independently scale your reads and writes if your loads are huge. And event sourcing helps with rebuilding your system from scratch. Now let me overlay the same example which we saw so that you can now understand it much better. So I said there are trading brokerages which were connecting using the connectivity API to create some orders. They had multiple order processors. So the matching engine was picking up all the orders from these order processors, matching these trades, matching these with the buy and the sell correspondingly, persisting them into a trade events database. And the matching service was publishing the response back to the connectivity API using the response processor and the trading brokerages got the executed orders. Parallelly, the matching service published a copy of the message into the event bus. Using the event bus, we consume from a service called post trade processing, which published into multiple queues for calculating the fees, risks, and also the current day trades. The process also published the messages for clearing and settlement. And finally, the fees API and the current day trades API was exposed to the trading brokers and the internal API which is the risk API was used by the internal system for risk calculation. And the trade events database here is referred to as the event sourcing system. The query service is the trade APIs using which we were querying the trades from the current day trades table, which is a separate table from the trade events database. Using the order processor, we executed a lot of orders to change the system. That's where the command service is referenced. I hope this architecture was very much helpful in understanding what is event sourcing and CQRS. Now let's move to when should I use it. So one classic example is this architecture. If you're working in a system like this, you can definitely use CQRS where you don't want to use traditional database, but you want to rebuild the state of your application from sequence of events, then you should be able to use event sourcing there. Or otherwise, when should you use it? You can use it for audit logging. So if you want to identify the audit pattern of your exact application, you can leverage event sourcing for it. So you can expose these audit APIs using the CQRS pattern. The next use of CQRS or the event sourcing pattern is for reliability. If you look at the earlier example, we had a separate database using which you could rebuild the entire state of your application from scratch. So that's where reliability comes in. So if something goes wrong, you can reliably build your application from scratch from the existing events. Also, you can individually scale your applications with respect to query and the command where you can individually scale your read APIs and the write APIs separately. That is another reason why you would be going for CQRS as a pattern. It also helps in the evolvability of your architecture because I can individually write a different model for my writes and individually write a different model for my reads. So I can evolve my entire system in a fashion where I don't have to have a exact tie between the read and the write APIs, but I can have an evolutionary architecture using which I can evolve my system's design. Finally, I can also build something called as parallel models using which I can build an exactly similar kind of a system, but with a different logic. For example, if I go to the diagram here, instead of doing post trade processing, I could publish these messages directly onto clearing and settlement and if I can ignore directly all these or I can build something entirely different from the events which we were getting. So you can have a parallel model built. So instead of having current day trades, risk DB and fees DB, you, you can change them into an entirely different data model and expose them parallelly and you can run them in parallel. Now if you ask me is it a silver bullet 
obviously no there are a lot of challenges with respect to event sourcing and cqrs that's why it's very less likely a lot of people use this pattern now let's understand what are the challenges the first one is very obvious it's very complex to manage as a whole if you look at the architecture which i showed this is a very small architecture but if, imagine a system at that particular scale it's going to be very complex to manage the whole system and there could be a lot of errors and there could be a lot of risks because there are different systems which are involved between the integration points the next obvious challenge would be the data consistency across your systems that's why it is called as eventually consistent because your writes could be completed faster and when you read your system within milliseconds or within nanoseconds you might not get the data immediately that's why you should be very careful in building systems based out of cqrs patterns because your writes will have a different way of injecting data into your database and your reads are going to be having a different way of retrieving your data from the database finally due to the complexity and the number of moving parts within the architecture you will have higher maintenance costs because you have more integrations more services and also more data these are some of the challenges which you could encounter when you are using event sourcing for your architecture i'll just summarize what we just discussed Initially, we went through the stock exchange server with an imaginary architecture and we understood what is event sourcing and what is and why do we need CQRS to help event sourcing systems to make it better. And we also saw when to use event sourcing and CQRS architecture to build reliable and scalable systems. Finally, we discussed some of the challenges which we could encounter while using event sourcing in our architecture pattern. I hope this particular video was helpful in understanding the whole event sourcing and CQRS as a whole. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.